Hello guys, Alan here. Welcome to my workshop. In my uh, previous video, I made an arbor, and I had a bit of a tease with uh, this, and perhaps you worked out that uh, this is intended to be a milling cutter. And uh, what started me off on this was I had a, a pack of uh, uh, carbide inserts that look really good and should be used for something. And I had some scrap steel, and I thought, I'm going to make one of these for those. And uh, along the way, uh, I've decided to reuse that arbor, uh, as, you, as you saw, and uh, so that I could uh, cut these pockets in the rotary table, I had to make up this arbor to, uh, as a, as a um, staging thing. Anyway, please stay with me as I make the, uh, the face mill this time, and uh, join me also at the end to see how well it works. So these inserts, uh, the geometry of these inserts is very unusual to my eye. Uh, they look like quality items though. I'm pretty sure they're ground. They've got uh, really quite sharp uh, cutting edges four of, which is a good thing. Um, I guess you could use them eight ways around. <laughs> anyway, uh, so not knowing what they were and not being able to get any help from Mr Google, I reached out to the Practical Machinist website and some very helpful fellows there pointed out that they were... Um, um, inserts for a tangential milling cutter. Well that was a new one on me. Um, lots of things are I suppose in the machining world. But anyway after a bit of digging I found out that uh, how they were supposed to be mounted was uh, sort of like that with a screw through them fixing a, a radial fixing screw onto the side of a round thing. So I thought well why don't I have a go at making something. Uh, so flexing my um, free CAD muscles, um, I knocked up this uh, prototype cutter. Um, rather than starting from scratch, I have a, this as an existing um, uh, big milling cutter, uh, which uh, obligingly has a um, an arbor, a detachable arbor. So I've made this to fit that. And that gets held together with a um, a big Allen screw. And um, so the purpose for, for modelling it in FreeCAD obviously is to uh, get a bit of a head up on what it is that I'm supposed to make. Now um, most of the machining that's going to be required to make this would be quite easy. It's pretty simple uh, um, straight turning I guess and then a bit of milling for this slot. But these pockets are the thing. Um, these inserts uh, uh, in my prototype here, and following advice from the um, Practical Machinist Forum, these uh, inserts, these pockets, are set at an angle um, to uh, give clearance for the insert. So um, the uh, you won't be able to tell here, but the uh, the top of the uh, pocket is inclined in the forwards direction of the cut, or inclined in the direction of the cut. So that makes this uh, cutting edge come into contact with the work first, and the trailing edge would have a slight clearance. Uh, it was suggested to me that maybe five thousandths of an inch would be appropriate, which equates to a one degree rake here. In addition to that, to make sure that the uh, trailing edge didn't uh, drag. I've got them set so that the, uh, the trailing edge is 0.2 of a degree, sort of like that, uh, like that if you like. So the, uh, the front edge here protrudes from further from the centre of the cutter than the back edge. Um, and I think that that's probably what's going to be required. So making the prototype was uh, pretty simple, but uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to go machining these pockets. <laughs> That's a challenge which I've got to uh, face. I might mention I gave the slicer in my new uh, Creality K1 um, printer a bit of a workout too, <laughs> trying to minimise the amount of uh, scrap required to uh, get these pocket angles correct. Because the um, in a compound angle situation, understanding or visualising exactly how the angles are going to interact uh, was a bit hard for me, so I just found it easier to do it in FreeCAD and then uh, 
experiment a little bit until I got the result I was looking for. But using the slicer to uh, make little pocket cutouts reduces the amount of time taken to do the prototyping and obviously reduces waste. Now, of course I thought it would be uh, amusing to uh, put it in the milling machine and see, see the wheel go around. And then of course I thought, well if I'm going to do that, I might as well see if it actually works. So uh, I've got a bit of um, one of the uh, this, uh, failed protos, one of the stepping stones shall we say, um, mounted here. And I can happily report, because I did a quick try before, I don't want to embarrass myself too much on, the, uh, on TV. It actually worked surprisingly well. There we go, that's uh, going to be a 0.2mm depth of cut. I did take a, uh, a cut earlier, so this one might well break through the skin into the, because this is hollow, this bit of plastic. We'll see. And indeed, indeed, it has started to cut through the skin there. Okay, so perhaps it's a bit amusing to do that, but it did highlight an issue which I was aware of. Um, probably only one, perhaps two of the inserts were actually doing any cutting. Because the issue, of course, is how to uh, set the pockets so that the, the inserts are all at the same depth. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Um, I'm going to make this piece out of 4140 but how to machine the pockets and particularly how to get the depth consistent that uh, to me is, is an unknown at the moment um, to be discovered. So I found a bit of scrap bar that's about the right size the OD isn't terribly important um, the uh, bore which engages on the nose of the arbor is the most important thing and uh, that needs to be uh, 27 millimeters uh, pretty closely. Um, the other dimensions, uh, body length and OD, as I said, and even this hole in the back here, not terribly critical. Uh, so I've started roughing, I've drilled a 13 mil hole all the way through, and I've started roughing this out towards 27. I think we're sitting on 22 at the moment, so a couple more roughing passes. It's probably the last one of these passes I'll do. I'll switch over to a, a different boring bar that will give me a better finish. We'll clear that out and see what size hole we finished up with. The surface finish isn't shocking, that's for sure. I'm hoping to get something a little bit better. We should be sitting on about 24, but let's just see. And 23.86 at the moment. Okay, well anyway, it's time to swap this boring bar out and put in my preferred one, which would be this fella. It's not uh, as large a diameter, but it is a carbide bar and uh, got pretty good results from it. We've got about a millimetre to come out. Uh, I might put a bit of oil in actually. Oh, I don't know. I want to change the recipe at this late stage. That finish is pretty good in there. Feels pretty smooth. I think we'll leave it alone. So let's go in at 26.5. Bigger micrometer now. So I was shooting for 26.5, 498, somewhere around there, and it's pretty darn close. So I think uh, I'll take my chances and go in at 27 and uh, hope for the best. 
Here we go. All right, well, let's see where we finished up. It's awkward holding the mic like this. I think you can see that there. I can expect as close to 27 as I could have hoped to get. But I guess more importantly, does the nose of the uh, arbor fit? Because that's uh, really what counts here. I haven't uh, chamfered that corner yet either. with that. Yeah, happy with that. Uh, so now uh, it's time to um, part it off I guess and then turn it around and do the counter bore on the other end. I wonder whether to part it off or just cut it off in the hacksaw bandsaw. Yeah, maybe I'll do it in the bandsaw because there's, uh, there's only a 13mm hole through the middle there so that's quite a lot of um, parting. Okay, so I've hacked it off and uh, hack uh, is the word, it's not particularly true but uh, I left myself plenty of margin for cleanup. And I thought also I'd try this idea which I've seen some other YouTubers do of using pieces of copper pipe um, to protect the, the surface of things but uh, yeah um, I uh, don't think that's a very good outcome for me so uh, I'm not sure exactly why it's brought in such a wobble but uh, it's NBG It's a simple enough thing to do, just cut a couple of bits to length, slice them and that, but uh, for whatever reason I'm not getting a good result. Because, I'll just nip this up gently just so you can see. Don't, don't get fooled by the wobble on the on the end here. Just look at the run out on the OD. And that's perfectly fine. So why these things brought in such a, a wobble, I don't really know. So I might just have to put up with marks on the OD of this thing. I'm not that fussed about that. So let's just nip that up a bit tighter. We get marks, we get marks. It's not the end of the world. Now, um, concentricity isn't really that much of an issue here either. The, uh, the, uh, to the extent that concentricity is important, it's all up this end in the bore that locates on the nose. This is just a hole for a, a draw bolt and I have to do um, a countersink clearance for the head of the bolt, and that's it. So, near enough is going to be good enough for that. Right, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll lose that corner though before we do anything else, otherwise, I know somebody who's likely to hurt himself on that. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, now I've got to do a counter ball, uh, open it out enough to uh, take the head of this bolt. But I think I'll go bigger um, because it would, uh, I don't need uh, all that metal there. And if I reduce the thickness here a little bit, it'll make it easier to drill the and tap the holes for the, um, the 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 screws that hold the inserts in place. So I'm going to shoot for um, um, 14 diameter, or a, sorry, a 14 radius or a 28 diameter hole, and I want to be 15 deep. And shoot for uh, 28. So of course I'm curious what I did actually get. Let's have a look. It was good. Always good to practice uh, hitting the numbers, even when they're not particularly important. So. 27 point, uh, it's a bit hard holding this guy. Well, I think we call that 28. <laughs> you got to get lucky sometimes. Of course, that's gone straight down to the Narnia. <clears throat> One thing I like about this lathe, when you drop things down to the chip pan, you can actually get them from the front. The, the lathe I had previously, you couldn't reach into the chip pan from the front. You had to reach around the back, which was a pain in the butt. Anyway, so we've just got to take this corner out. Yep, nice. And uh, this body is turned now and is ready for the uh, insert pockets to be milled into it. So I have to cut some pockets into a curved surface and uh, the bottom of the pockets is a compound angle. Uh, I've got to have two degrees in one direction, five degrees in the other. And so to achieve that, uh, it's really a piece of uh, a bit of uh, four axis machining I suppose. But anyway, um, I found this bit of plate. It came with a pair of uh, milling vices that I bought second hand yonks ago and I actually I forgot I had it. But anyway. Uh, it's big enough for what I want to do. So I've got, um, I'm making it into a sort of a very crude sign table if you like, tilt table. So I've got a 10 millimeter rod under this end and over that length that'll give me pretty much the two degrees I'm looking for. The exact angle in my application isn't critical, about two degrees will be fine. And uh, so now I've got to put the rest of the kit on here. Okay, so this uh, setup is taking quite a bit of head scratching and fiddling around. Um, this is the plate you saw that was set up with a two degree tilt in the XZ plane. Um, this is the base off the milling vise, which happens to be a convenient thing to bolt the, uh, the rotary table to. And um, I've got, so the face of the vertical table is now leaning forwards two degrees. And clearly I've got an angle plate bolted onto the face of that. And I've used the sign bar, um, you know, the top slide sign bar, and the appropriate th um, thickness of uh, stack here, of, of um, gauge blocks, uh, to get a five degree twist in the XY plane. And um, I'm now ready to uh, put the, um, the job that I actually want to mill into the uh, into the rotary table, so I've got to pull all this lot off, and that's the next stage of the setup. This is one of the more complicated setups and time-consuming setups I've ever done, but uh, 
we're getting there. This uh, plate is quite useful I think so I may yet come back with another project and uh, make it a bit easier to set this up for various angles. Anyway let's press on. So I'm ready to start cutting metal now I think <laughs> and because this uh, four axis machining is bloody complicated trying to work out the uh, uh, dimensions in 3D I printed off a, a block um, of the right size to practice on and um, had a go at uh, machining your pockets and that seemed to work alright. Um, I'm still very dubious about being able to machine all the pockets uh, to exactly the same position so it's still an interesting exercise. Anyway, but because I set up this up first to do that um, I didn't mill the uh, slots for the dogs in the back here in my blank but um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'll put a obviously a clamp bolt on the front here and um, a longer one than that I guess. Um, and I don't think there's going to be much uh, turning moment on that so I think I'll get away with that alright. Alright so I'll get that clamped on and get everything positioned and come back when I'm ready to start. Actually before I start machining I thought I'd share a bit more detail about the setup that I've used uh, because this is uh, involving machining on a curved surface which is rotated in the XY plane. Finding a datum point was, was a bit of a challenge for me, it's the first time I've tried to do this. So what I've done, these are just a couple of, um, I guess you'd call them uh, parallels of a sort, just some uh, things I've <laughs> they're actually actual raising blocks uh, from a Ford Transit van but anyway it's by the by so what they do is set up a, a surface a reference surface which I've put in contact with that front corner so now I can use the wobbler to find that face or in other words the edge of this round thing and I can also use this Oh, and sorry, and, and once I've found that edge, I know what the diameter of this is, and uh, so I can find a, a centre line. Now, it isn't half the diameter because it's rotated, so a little bit of um, trigonometry uh, to work out what the centre of the, of the offset diameter is. And then with that known, I can come up, uh, bring this up to the face of that, and find that uh, uh, contact point. Uh, so by then I've got a, a point in the middle on that front edge and um, through my CAD uh, drawing I was able to work out an offset from that point um, back to um, an index what, what, what I, where I've drilled a hole in the corner of the pocket and call that an index hole. So then all the other features I've worked out from that so if you think about it, the, the exact location of the inserts isn't that important but what is important is the, attachment, is the, the dimensions of the pocket and the uh, attaching features, the holes within the pocket. But this method I'm using here is a bit crude and there may well be much better ways to do it, I'd be interested to hear if there are, does at least allow me to fix a position on this rotated curved surface and then I can uh, set everything else as an offset away from that with accuracy and that's how I'm going to get repeatability. It isn't so much important exactly where that hole is as that I'll be able to reproduce that position at each of the five stations around the circumference of the, uh, of the cutter body. Well hopefully uh, that made some sense <laughs> but uh, I will now start doing some machining. So I'm on station and ready now to do my first index hole. I'll be using a 3.5mm flat bottom slot drill for this and also use the same uh, end mill, uh, same thing as an end mill to clean the pocket out. So fingers crossed. first hole. So I now have to reposition in a, in a bit uh, on the X and on the Y um, to leave three quarters of the hole I guess. 
so I'm going to come in two millimeters in each direction. So I'm going to take the pocket out in two passes, um, the 2.5 and then this final depth 4.7 and uh, let's see how we go. So I think I'll have a clean up and a quick look at that. All right, well I'm quite pleased with the way that's going. You can't see it very well so I'll bring you back when I've uh, finished doing that pocket. So having a bit of a closer look at that. So this is after the first pass at uh, 2.5mm deep. That's looking pretty good. Uh, I'll finish this one out the, like this but I might actually explore using a larger diameter cutter problem is I need the small diameter cutter to get in close to that corner and if I change them, uh, change cutters, then I've got to uh, get the bottom set level again and I think it's probably better just to keep going with the same cutter. It didn't take that long to get through that much material. Alright, well that's taken the pocket out to its full depth. You can see how that's supposed to sit in there now. So I've got to do the um, hole for the retaining screw and the hole for the dowel pin and both of those features are located away from the centre of that index hole now I'm quite keen to drill the hole for the retaining screw in exactly the right place which is in fact uh, not deadly on, dead on centre of the hole in the insert but on advice it's uh, offset 5 thou towards that corner so when the screw is done up it'll be no ambiguity, it's trying to pull the insert into the corner. That's the theory I believe. That should be enough to encourage the drill to go in the right place. So uh, this hole has to be uh, tapped for M4 so that's a 3.3 millimeter drill. That's really tight, I don't know why. That previous drill was 3.2, I'm not sure how I picked that up. This one's 3.3 though, so let's see if this will uh, reduce the chances of a broken tap. It's best when you're drilling a, and tapping a hole. It just all goes right from the start. As soon as one thing goes wrong, they seem to start piling up on you. Well, I managed to make something that should have been very simple look very difficult and complicated there for some reason. Anyway, we have a tapped hole. Let's see if it works. And of course that doesn't want to fit. I'm starting to uh, get a bit of um, peripheral neuropathy, particularly in the feet, but I'm also starting to get it a little bit in my fingertips as well. So precision of feel isn't what it once was. So we all have our crosses to bear. See if I can turn it in with this without dropping it again. Alright. It's a bit tight in the hole. I might run the just run the plug tap through there, make sure that the thread is fully formed. Yeah. Apparently peripheral neuropathy, that's a bit of a mouthful, applies to nerve damage external to the spinal column and um, there's three main reasons for it it seems. Diabetes, well that doesn't apply. Accident trauma, well I don't think that's the case. And the last thing is what they call idiopathic. Big word for saying they don't know. And uh, when nerve cells die, that's it, as far as I know it. Anyway, for the moment it's not uh, interfering with my life that much. As I say, everybody has their cross to bear. So the question now then, which we now get answered, is is the hole in the right place? Just uh, 
the lights tightening on that for the moment. Oh, come on, get in there, right. Do it too. Very happy with that. Okay, so now I've got to do the hole for the dowel pin. Two minds about this dowel pin. Um, for a start, if it isn't in exactly the right place, you know, lightly butted up against the side of the insert, I don't think it's going to do very much. But the uh, bigger issue from my point of view is the safety one. Um, because this thing is um, radial, with this thing spinning at, I don't know, 1,000, 1,200 RPM maybe, 1,000 probably, if this thing comes, gets flung out of its uh, hole, suddenly we've got a 2mm calibre bullet flying somewhere about. I'm not keen on that idea. So um, what I'm planning to do, these are truly 2mm. Now I did a bit of experimenting and if I drilled a 1.93 um, diameter hole, which I think was a number 27, something like that, then these things are quite a hard push fit into the, into the thing uh, and they won't come out. Um, so that's what I'm aiming for. But if it isn't in the right place it's useless. This is a, a long 2mm dowel pin. I put it in and, uh, with this set on the correct location and we'll see if it's just nicely tucked against the side of that insert. Let's try 9.94. It's still not catching on the side of the insert. Let's go with 9.9. .9. Now we're catching the side of the insert. Now, I've got to decide. I don't think catching the side of the insert is actually a good thing. Because it would, it would be able to push the top of the pin over a bit, but it wouldn't be able to move the bottom of the pin. And the last thing in the world I want to do is create a scenario where this doesn't go all the way. In fact, that's what's happened here. Looking at it more closely, it hasn't gone all the way down. Why is that? Well, it'd be hard for you to see, but I actually just ran the cutter around uh, again, just on 1.75 setting. And uh, it obviously was just enough that this piece is, is, now, is now fitting properly and is sitting down in the pocket. I suspect there was a little tiny ridge just around in the bottom corner that just highlights um, how difficult this is going to be to get all, all of these things riding at the same height. Anyway, that one now is good and I'm going to come back to uh, focusing on this 2mm um, pin, 2mm uh, hole for the dowel pin. Let me just try to do a little get the feel of it. That's going in at an angle isn't it? So that's a problem. Oh, I don't know actually. <laughs> might not be going in at much of an angle. Might not be enough of an angle to cause a problem anyway. I think that it's going to go in there just fine, but I don't want to put it in any further at the moment. And I certainly don't think it's going to come out once it's been <laughs> put in properly. So, could it go around 72 degrees, being a fifth of 360. Two. And on we go. 
Alright, well that's finished machining the five pockets. So I think the next move is to take it off the arbor and uh, remount the, the body so I can machine the, uh, the cutout for the, uh, the drive dogs. Okay, well we'll start with a 3mm deep pass and see how that goes. Yeah, come back the other way at uh, six millimetres. All right, well, let's clean this mess up and see what we've got. Okay, well, we've definitely got a slot. Let's see if it's big enough. So this is the arbor that's got to uh, work with it. So that's a little bit tight, doesn't it? Have to uh, give each side a slight clean up. I imagine that'll do it. Yep, just a little bit of play. Should be all we need. Right, let's pull it all out, clean it all up, and start assembling the thing. So I've given it a bit of a clean up. It, uh, it's scrubbed up all right, um, and I guess it's time to see if I can uh, get it all assembled now. Alright, I'll bring you back when I've got them all screwed on. Alright, well they all seem to go on alright. Um, five, Four of them were a really nice fit, but one of them was really quite tighter than I would have liked. But it's still, as in, the screw was pushing it tighter into the corner than I would have liked. But anyway, they all seem to have um, gone down flat into their seats. So I think that's the best I could have hoped for. Um, so now I'm going to have a look at um, um, trying to get these dowel pins in. No one sounds a bit harder. Okay, well I've got them in all round, this is the last fella, and you can see, hope you can just see, that's uh, quite a snug fit there. Alright, well that's fully assembled, and uh, we'll go on here of course. Pretty snug fit on here as well, mind you. So, I think it's over to the milling machine and uh, check it out. Alright, time for a test cut. Now, I'm trying to manage everybody's expectations a bit here. I have very low expectations for this. Um, the chances that all of the tips are at the same height are pretty low. I'll check it out later, but I just want to do a test cut to start with. And basically if it cuts anything at all, I'll call it a win. Uh, anyway, I'll give it an easy start by looking for a 0.1 millimeter depth of cut. And we'll see what happens. I've got it set for 600 RPM. Oh well, fingers crossed.
Well, bugger me. Not only is it cutting, it's doing a bloody good job. And how well you can see that, but that's, that's actually got a bloody nice finish. Whoa. Okay, well, let's finish the cutout. Why not? I'll put it on power feed now. Well, you can see that. That is staggering. Whoa. I think you can understand why I'm nearly speechless. Well, got to be happy with that. Okay, so I'll do one more pass back on the other face of this. I'll come at point 0.2 depth of cut this time instead of point 0.1. We'll see how that goes. I'm really surprised at how quiet it is too. They're getting very little um, uh, cutter type noise off it. Amazing. Uh, it didn't go deep enough there to uh, cut all of that out. So let's do one more pass at another point. Another point two. It's actually a bit deep on it. Anyway, I'll go at another point two. Well, that's pretty bloody spectacular. Okay, enough of that. It's time to wrap it up. Okay, well that turned out much better than I was expecting. This is a piece of steel I faced off uh, a while ago using this um, commercial five uh, cutter thing. Toolmaster, something or another. And this is what I've just done with the uh, homebrew. <laughs> it's just amazing. Now to be fair to this, the difference between these two jobs might well be more to do with the quality of the inserts than anything else. I mean I don't know what any, don't know anything about the quality of the inserts that are in this, but uh, I'm certainly pretty pleased with that. Well I think that was an outstanding success. I took these uh, obsolete um, inserts, you can't buy a, a cutter to, that will take these, they're obsolete some scrap uh, hydraulic cylinder bar and made the cutter which produced a really good finish uh, in fact uh, better than the uh, finish from a commercial one so I'm quite pleased with the way that all that lot worked anyway thanks for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one cheers <laughs>